Hello dear students and welcome to chapter 1 of Applied Computing 2, also called Computing 4, for Banking and Finance, HND, Level 2, Semester 2. Now, with this your program of um, Applied um, Computing 2, for Semester 2, Level 2, uh, like most of these softwares are barely or rarely tested during the HND, However, we are going to look at a few of them, but here we start with an introduction to what are software banks. So, what is a software What is a software bank or what is a banking software? A banking software is an enterprise software that is used by the banking industry to provide and manage their financial products or the financial products they provide. So banking software is an enterprise software that is used by the banking industry to provide and manage the financial products they provide. Okay. So it is also known as, as AKA core banking software core banking software so in an exam if you are asked to define banking software you have to make sure that these uh, highlighted points these main points uh, main words or keywords or key terms are there you write in your own words as well but make sure you write clean english i am not out for trash so this software is also Supply the infrastructure to build, deploy, and administer financial products. We know that banks actually provide intangible products or services. So banks actually provide services. Their products are not tangible. Unlike other products for manufacturing, like cars that they produce that you can, you can touch, and for the banking sector, you cannot touch the service. You can actually be rendered a service, but you cannot uh, actually touch that service like you can touch a bag, a chair, and whatever. So examples of uh, banking softwares include uh, software banks, Boch Bank, Delta Bank, Barbarossa, Hannibal, and there are a lot host of others out there. In this course, you're supposed to work with most of these uh, banks, but you're going to choose just one or two since they'll not really be tested at HND, when you'll be doing the practice, you work on uh, one of them. The good news is that the operating principle does not really change depending, uh, no matter which bank you are using. So you just have an idea of how these banks are used and to do some practical work on it. But throughout this uh, semester, we are equally going to evaluate everything you have done related to your field in computer uh, general computing from level one to level four which is presented in project works. So make sure you have looked at your project work and ask your classmates on the latest day for submission. So Mr. Tom is here to revise this slide with you. Define the term banking software five marks and give another name for banking software. So Mr. Tom actually revises each of the slides with you and take note of the questions he asks. You will find some of these questions in your quiz and in your exam. A word to a wise. Now look at two main reasons why computers are used in banks. There are many reasons why computers are used in banks. However, all these reasons can be grouped or classified into two. So the two main reasons why computers are used in banks are the first, it helps them to store their account information of customers and to verify financial records in a matter of seconds. So it helps them for storage of account information and for verification of financial records. That's the first uh, class or group of reasons why computers are used in banking. The second major reason or second category is it helps the banks to carry out quick transactions 
and make successful payments. So they are using it for quick transactions and successful payments. The first is for storage and verification. The second is for successful and quick transactions. In the next slide, you are going to look at the details. These two points are broken down into further details because these are just uh, groups. So we can further see why they are used. So according to this slide, what are the possible questions that can be asked? State two main reasons for computer usage in banks. Now you may ask, how is the information stored? Now for the account information, what type of information is required from the customer to store their information? You will need the customer uh, ID, bank account number, customer name, customer telephone number, maybe sometimes email and so on. Those are the type of things that they collect from their customers. Of course, you have been doing banking and you know the type of information that they should collect. Of course, we equally have uh, signatures that are equally used sometimes to compare to be sure that this is the person. They equally ask for their pictures, uh, is it pictures or four by four size photographs so that they can add to their information. So let's now look at the reasons for computers in banks in details. So the first uh, reason for electronic banking, e-banking. Uh, like before, banking was already done using traditional methods, but with the advancements in the internet and technology, banking is mostly electronic today, online. It equally helps in electronic fund transfer, like to send money abroad, receive money from abroad, send from one branch to another using electronic methods. Now in our country, in Cameroon here, we now talk about e-money, which is some sort of working with mobile money through phones and all of that. All of these procedures follow e-bank transfers. Many people equally now have electronic uh, wallets, like the ones provided, provided by UBA Bank, where even if you don't have a bank account, you can still have a wallet, a UBA uh, floating card, which you can use to save your money and do other transactions for PayPal, do your business, sell online, buy online, and so on even if you don't have a bank account. So it's also used for computerized credit analysis. So credit analysts use uh, computers for the analysis. And you know, analyzing uh, all of these financial transactions, the computer is very, very fast. And thanks to other softwares that have been impl implemented or created, they equally help in making this process swift. Now, it's also used for computerized customer relationship management, okay? This management of customers. And if you have so many customers, just imagine the stress you go through using the book, pen, and paper methods to do that. That's really going to be killing you. But thanks to technology, softwares have been created which helps uh, bankers in actually doing these computations in a matter of seconds or minutes without going through a lot of headache. So they equally use it for computerized loan processing. Yes, I know banks like to give out loans. That's the main source of their money coming in. They like to motivate people, cajole them to take loans, and the end people will be there crying for taking the loans because now these people will be enjoying and collecting their money. Sorry I'm saying this, but am I lying? I'm not. So it's also used for computerized record keepings. With this, you can easily sort, like in Excel, for example, I'm using Excel because you have done a bit of Excel. So it's equally being used for computerized record keeping. So you can easily keep your records and edit online, unlike pen and paper and book, where you have to maybe you have to start counting things out here and there, which is stressful. It's also used for remote ID screening. Like for example, a customer might not be able to come to the bank and maybe wants to do one or two things and you want to check to verify if this is the person. So it's also used for real-time fraud detection. So they can use this computerized information like you have given your face detections, your 4x4 four four size photos, your signature and so on. So they can use the computer to detect if this signature is your own or not, or this face is your own, or maybe the fingerprints you have used in a particular bank is yours or not to verify and so on. So they can equally use it for all other methods to detect, uh, verify or detect uh, fraud, okay? There are many other reasons you have just given eight here, which you yourself can check them out. So yes, Tom, what do you have to say concerning this slide? State five uses of computers in banking and finance. 
So if you say state, you just give it like this. But if they say state and explain, you now have to buttress your point. Okay? So take note of that state, state and explain. Those are two different things. If I say state, just go straight to the point. If you state and explain, when you give your statement, you now expand shades. So what type of computer is used in banking? Of course, we know that in banking, you have your personal computers for the, this thing, the tellers, the accountants, the loan officers, the controllers. They have their personal computers, but all of these are linked to the main computer. So that main computer is what we are going to be referring to here. So supercomputers are used in banking, and the supercomputer used in banking is what they call the mainframe computer. We are going to see in the next slide what is a mainframe and why it is used in banking. So, just about everyone has used a mainframe computer at one point or another. If you ever use an automated teller machine, that's ATM, to interact with your bank account, you use a mainframe. Today, mainframe computers play a central role in daily operations at most of the world's largest corporations. So your ATM, also called automated teller uh, machine, is that machine where you go and slot your ATM card to do a deposit or to do a redrawal. Okay? So that's an ATM machine. So mainframe computers are used in banking. Yes, Tom, what type of computer is used in banking and finance and what is the full meaning of the abbreviation ATM? Next slide. So, what is a mainframe computer and what are its characteristics? A mainframe computer is a data server designed to process up to 1 billion web transactions daily with the highest levels of security and reliability. Most of these online corporations use mainframe computers. Why? Because they process so many web transactions a day. So, if you are working online and you have to work with so many transactions, you may need a web, a mainframe computer, which is a super computer designed to process up to a trillion web transactions daily with high levels of security and reliability. How many billions make one trillion class? Of course, you know, you are bankers and uh, financial analysts, you people know so much about numbers. So what are the characteristics of mainframe computers? You have just um, uh, mentioned them in the definition. It has super high security or very high security and very high reliability, okay? Another characteristic is it's high speed. It processes transactions in matters of seconds. So another characteristic you should add here is super high speed, okay? Another one is that it is global, right? Because we are talking about web transactions. So it's, it's web, it is global, worldwide and operates 24 on 7. So the next one it is uh, global, okay, high speed, and it works 24 on 7. So here I've added three other points. So the exam, I may say, state four or five characteristics of a mainframe computer, okay? So that's it. Now the daily capacity or output of a mainframe, which is mentioned also in the definition, can process up to one tra a trillion transaction per day. So from here, you can calculate the number of transactions per hour, per second, and so on. Yes, Tom, what are mainframe computers? State two characteristics of mainframe. In fact, state four characteristics of mainframe. What's the daily output of a mainframe? What are the advantages of computers in banking? What are the advantages of using computers in banking? So the advantages are here, transaction speed. So online bank sites generally execute and confirm transactions at a quicker than ATM processing speed, okay? The next one is efficiency. Another advantage is efficiency. Mm -hmm. So there are many other advantages of using computers in banking. And then another one is automation. I've not listed this one here, but another one is automation, okay? So, these transactions can be automated. You know about automation, right? 
to design or programs to run on its own. That's why you can go to an ATM machine, interact, and so on. It's automated. There are many other advantages which I think you should check. So assignments, take two cons of computers in banking. Now, what's a con? What's the meaning of con? Con means disadvantage. Pro is an advantage. So instead of talking of advantages and disadvantages, I may talk about pro and pros and cons. Now, state two software is used in banking and finance. I think in the first slide we explained this, we stated this, so you can just copy from there. Yes, Tom, state two advantages of computers in banking. I am adding state two pros and cons of using computers in banking, like this second one here, the assignment. So, yes, yes, thank you so much. That's the end of the chapter. Make sure you go through the, um, make sure that you go through all of the questions, go through the chapter, answer the questions that have been asked without even being written down. Our next chapter will be on looking at simple operations in banking and finance using Microsoft Excel. You are advised to come to class with your computers, except if you, but you ha if you have uh, Excel in your mobile phones, that will be okay. Make sure you take a look also at the projects, okay? Make sure you take a look at the projects as well. So, thank you so much and see you next class. You can get this note online from the website. You can check. I've sent, I have sent the links to the groups. And you can equally watch this video and the other videos 24 hours after the class. All right. Nice to meet you and ciao.